It's 2 p.m. Saturday, October 30th, 2021. We're aboard the Paddle Wheeler Three, Water, Three Rivers Queen, part of the Gateway Clipper Fleet here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're on the Monongahela River, just starting the cruise. We'll do all three rivers today. This Monongahela, the Allegheny, and the Ohio River. Well, watch your ears on the other decks, please. Watch your ears, especially up front, bearing the sound of that horn. It's pretty loud, especially up front. Watch your ears. And that old bridge pier in the distance, that was, uh, I think, the Wabash Railroad coming into downtown Pittsburgh. Monongahela Railroad is over there and the bank is the CSX Railroad Main Line. And this bridge pier, I'm sure that's the old, uh, that was the Wabash Railroad coming into downtown Pittsburgh. So Mr. Connolly being in the position that he rolled to the percent saw something in the rivers that nobody else saw at that time. And that was the commencement. So he decided to start a river boat. There's some of the other gateway clipper fleet. After a couple of months of searching, they found a vessel that didn't carry The next step would be to bring the boat here to Pittsburgh. Now you think, Erie to Pittsburgh, we're going by the uh, station square complex, the old Pittsburgh and Lake Erie station is down there. Lake Huron into Lake Michigan, Lake Michigan into the Chicago River. Chicago River to the Mississippi River, one of the Mississippi Rivers to the The Mississippi River to the Ohio River, the Ohio River to the Monongahela River. As I said, the journey took about two and a half weeks to go to ride here on May 17th, 1958. The very first cruise was the very next day. May 18th, 1958, they took a group of 25 Girl Scouts out from Michigan. Well, I think Mr. Conway made the right decision because this year the Gateway Clipper Fleet is celebrating its 63rd season, 63 years here to uh, Pittsburgh Three Rivers. We have grown to five vessels strong, and when all five vessels are filled to capacity, we can transport almost 2,000 people. So, uh, Let's zoom in on the old Pittsburgh and Lake Erie station now, a restaurant. I'd like to turn it over to our narrator, Alex, and he will take you through the rest of the video. Thank you, Captain, and thank you, everybody, for coming out to see us today. We've got a lot to cover on our sightseeing tour, so let's get started. On the right, you will see Station Square Center at one point, a thriving railroad station. That's the name. Today, home to a number of excellent restaurants, and we took a get up on a go crab shack in Texas Bay, Brazil. Behind Station Square is Mount Washington, and the tracks you see running up the side of it are part of the famous Monongahela Incline, the oldest and steepest continuously operating funicular railway in the United States. I'll be detailing more of the history of the Incline later on the cruise. For now, we 
you're approaching the 15th Street Bridge, the oldest bridge in Pittsburgh at 140 years of age. In the 1990s, it was designated as a historic landmark of the city and restored to the original colors that you see now, brown, blue, and gold. Which is unusual. You may have noticed that all the other major bridges downtown are painted bright yellow. City Mall says that they have to be painted that way in order to reflect Pittsburgh's golden triangle, the downtown financial district. With an obvious exception, of course, to our historic landmark. A little further up the river, you'll see a rail bridge crossing the Monongahela. That is the key bridge, so named because it provides a route to strong right rail system, the key. How imaginative. The key is free to ride downtown, by the way, so if you would like to pay in the sights of the Golden Triangle up close without hunting for ever more expensive parking spaces, you have a friendly alternative. Downtown Pittsburgh in the distance, the Golden Triangle. And you may notice that it bears an uncanny resemblance to the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. As the story goes, the same engineer was commissioned to work on both bridges, but he wasn't sure if his design for Frisco would work or not, so he tested it out on a smaller scale here in Pittsburgh. I guess that makes us a guinea pig in the equation. I'm sure he's not the other one. I cannot confirm or deny the truth of this story, but it makes for a nice tale all the same. In front of us is our first look at Pittsburgh's famous city skyline. And I'd like to direct everyone's attention in particular to a tan brick building with the name Hunting Train at the top. Let's zoom in on the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Station again. The antenna at the top is an airplane beacon, and every night it lights up with flashing green shows spelling out the name Pittsburgh, the North Coast. In case you forget where you are. Across the street from the Grand Building is a strange looking skyscraper like four silver banded octagons all pushed together. One Oxford Center, a one stop shopping center where you can buy anything from a Rolex to a Rolls Royce. It was a stunning moment to stand next to it. If you're curious about the shape of the tower, when it was first commissioned, the owners told the architect, mm -hmm. one of those bridges in the distance is for light rail, part of the Pittsburgh uh, light yeah, rail system. The newest addition to Pittsburgh Skyline is the tower at DMZ Plaza, easy to spot because of its slow group of solar panels. Built in 2016, it is the greenest skyscraper of the world, requiring only a bunch of electricity to power it in one month and two Pittsburgh households. As we cross back underneath the surface of three bridge, take a look at all of the lights that you will see a parking garage walking along the riverbank. That is the Monongahela Wharf, the one known home to the Gateway Cooper, and now home to the cheapest parking in all of downtown Pittsburgh. So cheap, because every now and again, as you might imagine, it's what? So if you need cheap parking, you know it's there. Now we're going north toward the uh, meeting of the Allegheny River to form the Ohio River. Building 247. Check. No doubt you've already noticed the imposing looking glass skyscraper with the spires on top. That is PPG Plates, which stands for Pittsburgh Plate Glass. Built in the 1980s to celebrate the birthday centennial anniversary. It's part of a Pittsburgh tradition that on their anniversary, it's part of Pittsburgh tradition that whenever companies build a corporate headquarters within the city, they ask the architect to showcase their product in the building design. Honestly, I can think of worse companies here. In the days of Pittsburgh Plate Glass, they were showing off their, well, I think it's pretty obvious, don't you? Other examples of this tradition include the Alcoa building on the banks of the Allegheny River, 
and the U.S. Steel Tower, which I'll be telling you more about later on. In the meantime, coming up on either side of the boat, we'll see a pair of dark, worn stone bridge gears. These are all that remain of the ill fated Wabash Rail Bridge destroyed back in the 1940s. When the city tore the bridge down, they crushed the numbers and figured out that tearing out the bridge appears more expensive than it was actually worth. So they just left them there in the river to be fed with stolen claim marks in the city. They are on for private sale, however, so if you have a few million extra dollars burning a hole in your pocket, consider investing in a piece of this for history. For a time, they considered rebuilding the Wabash Bridge, but by the time they got around to it, downtown Pittsburgh had become so crowded there was no place to put in a connecting railway. And if you're curious, I have been asked by more than one person what anybody would do with those fears. What could be the point? What could you possibly do with them? Hypothetically, you could get away with building a house on top of them. Why? Why not? Directly ahead of us is Pittsburgh's most famous and infamous bridge, the Fort Pitt Bridge. And when I'm saying infamous, <laughs> oh yes, I am speaking from experience. It's a double-decker, both strings are special design, each level with four one-way lanes of traffic merging into two one-way lanes of traffic. The one side of the bridge being over 300 feet long, having more than 150,000 vehicles crossing the roadway on average, and that map works out with the traffic on the bridge being a little bit... Now, that said, driving on the bridge might not be a lot of fun, but exiting the Fort Pitt tunnel on the left does give you one of the most breathtaking views of Pittsburgh's skyline anyway. A view so great in fact to a feature that returns the parts of the annual wildfire. Again, here's a pier of the old Wabash Railroad the bridge over the Monongahela Wabash Railroad that came into the downtown the Pittsburgh. The bridge on the right is the area of Old State Park, one of the most historically significant areas in the region. It's no small part because it is where the city of Pittsburgh was founded, and it is the original real estate over which the French Indian War was started. Obviously, there's a lot of history behind that, but we don't have that now here, so here's the dress here. 1700, Europeans found the point, liked it, French set up front, English beat them on, took it off of them, set up four at the point, Pittsburgh was born. There, that's all the stuff that's going to be on the back. The red brick building at the rear of Point State Park is the Point Pace Museum, which contains historic artifacts from around the region, and was built on the site of one of Fort Pitt's original five towers or bastions to help give you a sense of its scale. The park itself is home to a number of city sponsored events throughout the year, including the Three Rivers Art Festival and until recently the Three Rivers Regatta. The Regatta was sadly canceled in 2019 due to financial issues, but it hopes to be making a return in the near future. At the very end of Point State Park is its crown jewel, the Fountain of the Point. The fountain was remodeled about a decade ago, adding in the computer system to control the height of its town. On a clear day, it can shoot water up to 150 feet in the air. I say on a clear day because that computer also measures the wind speed. The higher the wind speed goes, the lower the stop goes. That feature was added in to conserve water, since before now it was not unusual for a strong wind coming out of the river to blow bits and strays of the fountain all the way to the Lincoln Hotel behind Point State Park. Now we're looking at the Fort Pitt Bridge over the Monongahela. Right now we are sailing on the Monongahela River and approaching the confluence of the three rivers. The Monongahela begins in Fairmont, West Virginia, and flows north 128 miles to Pittsburgh. This is due to the mountains of West Virginia being at a higher elevation than the city is. In fact, the Monongahela is one of only a handful of rivers in the world that flows north the entire way. 
the most famous of which being the Nile in Egypt. Another interesting feature of the Nile to Halo is that there are no islands along its entire length, which for a river this size is virtually unheard of. We're now about to scrape our way to the Ohio River, which is formed by the combination of the Monongahela and Allegheny. From the point of Pittsburgh, the Ohio flows over 900 miles south of Cairo, Illinois, where it meets up with the Mississippi River, making Pittsburgh accessible from anywhere in the world via our waterway. River on the right past the point begins in Southern Shore and flows through Pennsylvania and New York before ending up here in Pittsburgh. Unlike the other two rivers, however, only the first third or so of the Alabama can be navigated by boat. The rest is just far too shallow. As a matter of fact, during the colonial period, all three of these rivers were only about three. Now we're looking, we're looking down the Ohio River. You can only take boats up and down them during this. Now we're starting down the Allegheny River. All three rivers were named by the Native Americans. In addition to our river, Pittsburgh is also known as the City of Bridges because we have 446 of them currently in operation. One of our famous bridges ahead of us is the Fort Duquesne Bridge. While the Fort Duquesne became infamous for its central traffic, the Fort Duquesne is instead famous for a funny story connected to it. You see, when the bridge was first commissioned, somebody made a mistake filling out all the paperwork. So, while well, the bridge did not need to get built, yes, the highway was supposed to connect to it. What followed were several embarrassing years, as that one type of wound up the production of the highway and red tape. The bridge just sat there in the middle of the river, walking off and did nothing. Local called it the great conveyor. And there goes a CSX free. Looks like a solid train of auto racks. One day in the 1960s, the University of Pittsburgh Free and drove onto the bridge. Disregarded all of the warning signs along the way and promptly drove right at them. The star turned over one to the air and landed upside down in the shallows. Amazingly, though, the driver was uninjured. Oh, yes, he lived through that. It's kind of a mixed question, really, because the ultra definition of years of Pittsburgh is joking about how our city took off the falling off the bridge for no reason. It was even a running day for a while for radio DJs and also followers. Come on, Jared Zombie, you think you to get off the Fortune King Bridge! Never let it be that the Pittsburgh was going to go and sell those things. On that note, a quick answer for you. In 2011, 400 families received their annual picture card from a popular local comedian named Bob the Color. And the final the car with a picture of Bob sitting at his desk, talking on the phone and saying, I want to be good in a quiet neighborhood. The inside of the car? A picture of Ali Davy Simmons in the old car. The car is not going to be a good one. Turning our attention back to the skyline ahead of us, you'll see a set of glossy silver structures that make up Gateway Center. Built during Pittsburgh's Renaissance and home to a venerable Pittsburgh institution, ADKA Broadcast Church. ADKA Radio began broadcasting in 1920, making them the oldest commercial radio station in the world. 
Clemente Bridge, named for the player on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, 
Andy's remains are in here in Pittsburgh, and at the far left end of the Warhol Bridge behind the Terrence White Building is the Andy Warhol Museum, the largest museum in the world dedicated to the work of a single artist. One of my favorite quotes from Andy goes like this. I have learned that you have more power when you shut up. Which is really great change to be a professional talking man. Downtown Pittsburgh, Golden Triangle. Our third and final sister bridge is the Rachel Carson Bridge, named for the famous environmentalist and activist. She was born and raised in Pittsburgh suburbs and did extensive research into the pesticide known as DDT. She discovered that not only was it great at killing pests, it was super good at killing off all the birds. She published her findings in a book titled Silent Spring. Thanks to her activism, the CDP was eventually banned and the bird population returned to normal. Enough so, in fact, that bald eagles are once again residents of Pittsburgh. And speaking of environmental friendliness, coming up on the right is the David L. Bowen Convention Center, one of the largest and greenest convention centers in the world. The man who is named for David L. Bowen is the only person to be mayor of Pittsburgh and governor of Pennsylvania. The unique sloped roof of the building was polished by the workers putting on three hoodies and sliding down it to get the sheen they wanted. Kind of wish I did it for that guy. The roof also has a set of scrolling blue LED lights to spell out passages from children's books. So if you find yourself walking into Pittsburgh one night, you can look out the window and catch up on some light reading. Only one, I find my simple fix. Behind the convention center is an intimidating brown black skyscraper with the letters UPMC at the top. That is the U.S. Steel Tower mentioned earlier. Pittsburgh's tallest skyscraper and part of our tradition build your headquarters out of your stuff. In this case, U.S. Steel was showing off their 410 steel line, which is specially engineered to develop a thin layer of rust on the outside in order to protect the metal inside for decades to come. An innovative design that has one unforeseen complication. At the time the tower went up, Pittsburgh was still very polluted and experiencing an acid rain problem. Ordinarily, it takes four ten feet of about two to three months to rust, but the acid rain caused the tower to rust within a week. By the time the city got protected totally from the exterior of the tower, the entire block was down by Pittsburgh to become one of the rough dust. And the city had to spend tens of thousands of dollars just to replace the sidewalk concrete. As it does, by the way, spark you think you are, major may pull it out of here by the exterior.
about to go under the former Pennsylvania Railroad, now Norfolk Southern Bridge over the Allegheny River. I'll be going over to my uh, girlfriend and partner for life, uh, Carmen Montoya, and I will be going over the bridge tonight on the Capitol Limited to Chicago due to leave the Amtrak Pittsburgh Station at 11.59 p.m. tonight. And there's a Norfolk Southern Freight headed for uh, probably uh, Conway Yard. Be going north, uh, kind of northwest up along the Ohio River. Pittsburgh Amtrak station, former Pennsylvania Railroad station, just to the left of the bridge. down the Allegheny River. Under the uh, former Pennsylvania Railroad, now Norfolk Southern Railroad Bridge again, over the Allegheny River.
go back, we are not. You know, we're not going to. We are going to have to become a BNT park. BN, BNG Park. Lee, the Pittsburgh Steelers play here. It's about uh, 2.45 p.m. Saturday, October 30th, 2021, aboard the Gateway Clipper Three Rivers Queen on the Allegheny River, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, over and out. <laughs>